Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the new vlog. This is the very first video of the channel. The weather sucks outside. We had some nice days. I think it actually got up into the 80s for a couple days. I was riding a ton. So I didn't get any footage. And the main reason why is basically just because I just started this channel, kind of had the idea during this whole self-quarantine, you know, stay at home order stuff. I figured, you know what? I've got some time on my hands. Let's start a channel, right? So since the weather sucks, we can't get out and ride. I figured this first video, we would just talk about my bike and um, is it worth it to get a clone? This is a clone. This is not a Honda Grom. It's a Chinese knockoff. You've probably seen a bunch of videos about these bikes. Um, I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet this first video for you guys and uh, basically just talk about what I done with mine, where I got it, and how much. Let's get started. So for starters, let's just talk about where I got mine from. Um, this is a 2019. I got it in July of last year, towards the end of July. I got it for 1,098 bucks on familygokarts.com. The reviews for familygokarts.com, not that great, guys. I was actually pretty concerned after uh, I made my purchase and placed my order. The only issues that I really saw with them were when it came to like titles or maybe somebody bought some sort of bike or an ATV through them and a part was broke and it seems as if the communication was kind of, uh, kind of crappy. I will say with my specific situation, my specific encounter with these guys, it was awesome. I didn't have any problems. They were super nice, super helpful. Um, answered every question that I had, and I really didn't have a bad experience with FamilyGoKarts.com. In fact, I actually recommended this bike to two of my buddies, and they bought them. Um, and I don't think they had any issues either. Everything went smoothly. Obviously, read reviews, guys, when buying. There are other websites out there that sell these clones. They are usually different names, a little bit different designs. My clone is actually a clone of, I wanna say the first or second gen. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about the actual Honda Grom bikes in terms of generations, but this headlight unit and the way it looks comes from the first or second, I don't know how many generations there are. First or second gen clone. Uh, my buddy got a clone from Boom is the brand that he purchased, and he purchased his off of uh, Amazon.com, and his has the newer headlight unit design of the brand new Honda Groms. So uh, yeah, that's just the difference between uh, some of these Chinese bikes. They pick and choose, uh, they want theirs to look like. Real quick, in terms of modification and modding these bikes, Super duper cheap guys. I will try to go through as quickly as possible all the parts that I bought for my bike I'll give you a ballpark number if I can't quote it right off the bat But some of these parts I am almost 100% positive the price and I will tell you if I know all the parts that I did purchase for this bike Still bring the bikes total price Way under the price of a brand new Grom. Um, so for me that is a big plus and that is why um, That is why I bought this specific clone because parts are cheap a vast majority of Official ground parts or Grom parts will fit not so much internals because the difference real quick with this bike Chinese clones um, these are carbureted bikes. They don't have an ECU. It's not fuel injected like the Honda Groms. So that's, I think, is gonna be one of the big, big differences between the two if you do not know that already. Um, so real quick, before this video gets super long, let's go in and talk about what I did to my bike. Now guys, I'm probably not gonna cover every single thing in depth. Um, we can always do that again in another video. Um, also, if I don't cover something that you were hoping I was gonna cover, maybe leave a comment below and I can reply to that, or I'll make another video and uh, cover it in that. So, let's get to it. I was wondering where my other key was. I left it in here. All right guys, let's start up front. One of the first things that I did is I replaced the turn signals. The ones that come with it are really big and massive. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 
they're just ugly. They're big and bulky and they're clear. I think the plastic is clear and it's got a uh, amber bulb in there. They just look really ugly and scooter-like. And obviously I didn't want to go that route. I didn't want to keep those on there. I wanted to give it a more sporty look. So I bought this four pack, two in the front, two in the back. Turn signals. Uh, what's cool about these turn signals are, they are daytime running lights. So those are always on. So that's a pretty cool feature. Those will always be on. They have built-in daytime running lights on them. The other cool thing, they're sequential. I think that looks so sick. So these turn signals look way better. LEDs, a lot brighter, and they're sequential. In the back here, it is also sequential. And if I remember correctly, uh, it's a set of four. You get the fronts and the backs for around 20 bucks on Amazon. If I can find a link to these exact ones, guys, I'll leave a description down below, as well as any other product that I mention on here. If I can find them, you can find it down below and uh, yeah, purchase them for your bike. While we are back here, let's actually cover the tail light. I don't have the stock tail light with me to show you what it looks like. Um, it's the same shape and actually the stock one is just solid red plastic with some LEDs in there. So it's like a standard uh, brake light. This one, I believe, was about $13 to $15 on eBay, and it is smoked out. The plastic is clear, it's smoked out, and you can see the LEDs. With this specific one, also, it has integrated turn signals. Um, I don't have those hooked up because I think these turn signals look a lot cooler, but if you do not go this route and say you want to remove these and you just want the tail light on your bike, you can hook it up to where it'll blink on this side and it'll blink on this side. The turn signals are on the inside. And I do believe they, they light up the amber color. So that's also pretty cool. Back to the front guys. The headlights on these bikes. It comes with a halogen H4 headlight bulb. Um, the stock bulb is so dim. At night I couldn't really see anything. It was horrible. So what I did, I went with a, a two pack, I believe on Amazon. I think they were 20 bucks for a two pack of H4 LED automotive headlights. And they fit perfectly guys, and it's super bright. So, highly recommend upgrading that headlight on these things too, because again, at night, trash guys, you can't see anything. Moving along guys, let's move along to the handlebars. You can see these are a low profile handlebar. I can't remember how much they cost. I want to say they were 15 bucks. Again, most of my parts anodized red. You can see the handlebar mount here, and then the actual handlebars are anodized red, and it goes all the way along out to here on both sides, so it's a little bit longer. Here are the stock handlebars, and they are pretty high up. It almost feels like you're riding a bicycle, like a BMX bike or something. So I ended up getting rid of these and putting these ones in because it looks a lot sleeker, way cooler to me. Mirrors, guys, I upgraded the mirrors. Stock ones, they come like way up here and it's got a big ugly ball, circular style uh, mirror and they're pretty tall up. I did not like those. It definitely looked like a scooter. I got rid of those and I, and I purchased these. And I believe these were, again, 13, uh, to 15 bucks. I am not sure if that's the exact price. I'm sure I can find that for you guys, but I highly recommend getting these. I used to have these mirrors and they were red on the ends to match bar end mirrors. So it would go in here and it looks kind of cool, right? But uh, the problem is over time with my bike, as well as my buddy's bike, um, they just get loose. And I had the issue of these things actually over time riding and going over bumps, it would fall like this and just dangle. I actually had one fall off and I ended up holding on to it and I had to pull over because it fell off. So I'm not a fan of those. Uh, again, I went with these and check this out guys. They are sturdy. The wind is not gonna blow this thing over. It's, it's, it's not going anywhere. That was another issue with the bar end ones, for me anyway, is the wind would slowly uh, move the mirror. These have a better field of view, in my opinion. You're not doing the whole chicken wing, chicken wing thing. You guys, if you ride, you know what I'm talking about. The whole moving your elbow, 
chicken wing thing to kind of see behind you. You don't have to do that with these. Um, it, it points directly behind you in the field of view. Like my view is amazing, it's perfect. And uh, also real quick, you can tell it's a tinted blue look. So that's kind of cool. I personally like that. They do have regular, uh, just a simple mirror without the tint on it. I do like the tinted look. It just makes it so they're not as bright. Who wants to get flashed, you know what I mean, when you're trying to ride, especially at night, and you got these bright headlight beams in your eyes. Um, so that, that tint does help, and you can kind of see the contrast difference of the colors. Another mod that I did, guys, was I removed this. It's not bad. There are other Chinese clone bikes that have this same speedometer, and uh, you can actually change the color of the background. Um, I will say this Teo Teo or Tao Tao Hellcat, my stock unit and all of them only have a fixed color of orange for the background. It wasn't really bothersome, it's whatever, you know, it works and that's all that matters. But me, I like to customize my stuff. So I went with this uh, speedometer, it's a universal speedometer off of Amazon and I want to say it was around 33 bucks. Um, so again, not bad, free shipping. If I can find it, I'll post that below. It just looks a lot cooler. I like the whole needle thing and I can actually show you what that looks like. Pretty cool, I think that's sick. That's pretty dope. One more gain, look at that, yeah buddy. Okay, um, it has a shift light and actually if you redline, um, that'll blink too. Um, the background color of this, guys, I don't know if you noticed that change there, it went to a different green color. There's like a teal. That's supposed to be white, blue, purple, red, and back to like the old school um, yellowy green color. Um, obviously your indicators are over here, your turn signals. Um, we've got your neutral, uh, a fuel, low fuel level light, uh, and then a water, temperature light, so if it gets too hot. Um, on these bikes, they are air-cooled, so that light will never come on. Um, it's got the battery light and a check engine light. Um, it also has a gear indicator. I'll see if I can show you that with the bike off. I'm pretty sure I can. So up here, guys, uh, you have a gear indicator, which is pretty sweet. Here's your odometer. You can change it from miles per hour to kilometers. Your fuel. Um, I ended up installing this. Uh, it's a voltmeter. Um, do I need it? Do you need it? Probably not. Um, it was a couple bucks. I thought it was pretty cool. So I grabbed it and actually um, just kind of helps me keep an eye on my battery and just with some of the mods that I've done, um, I like to be able to take a look at what's going on with the bike. So it just kind of gives me an exact uh, measurement of what my battery is and if it's healthy. Um, I did, however, buy a little bit bigger battery for this bike, the stock one, that you get. Nothing wrong with it, guys. Um, nothing wrong with the stock battery, guys. Um, I just decided to get a little bit bigger battery. Um, moving on real quick. I went with a Nibby Carb. It's a Nibby racing carburetor. 26 millimeter, I believe. Um, you can buy this as a set. It comes with all three pieces, and that's 100 around a hundred bucks on Amazon. Um, I ended up buying it all at different times and separately. The uh, carburetor is 66 bucks. Intake is 15 bucks, 15, 16 bucks. And the cone filter is around the same price. Um, guys, I upgraded my jet to 115. With that increase of air volume coming in, you kind of want it to even out a little bit more. So I went a little richer. No problems whatsoever, um, runs smoothly. Let's talk about the exhaust. This exhaust is actually, um, it's meant only for a legitimate Grom. Um, going back to what I said about how Grom parts fit these, some don't, uh, some will not, so you really have to check that out. Um, I knew this wasn't gonna fit exactly like it was supposed to because with the Grom, you can see where my exhaust out is from the engine. Uh, it's right here, obviously, and on a Grom, they are set back a little bit more. So originally, this piece, you can see the discoloration right here. Um, me and my buddies, we actually heated this up with a torch, a few torches, and uh, rather than it having that typical Grom bend right here, 
Um, we ended up bending it more this way, so now it fits. Boom, simple fix for that. Sounds amazing, and uh, yeah, it fits. If you guys are wondering why I put some uh, putty here, that's because <laughs> when we were bending this, I accidentally crimped the uh, side of this a little bit, so it's you know our fault, obviously. It will not necessarily happen to you guys, but we crimped it in, so it did create a little bit of an exhaust leak. Um, for the price, I don't care, not a big deal. Um, it works, it's not going anywhere, and it sounds awesome. So screw it, put a little bit of putty on there, you'll be all right. I will say my buddy bought uh, a Zoom exhaust. Um, we've heard nothing but good reviews about these Zooms. Uh, and again, they're specific to Honda Groms. This, this one you can get, I believe, on Amazon. Guys, this is like 300 bucks. Um, the first one that my buddy bought, this is it right here. It actually broke. The weld broke off the mount. Uh, you can see where it fell off his bike and it dented and stuff like that. And uh, at the time, it was usable still. It was just beat up. He actually contacted Zoom. Uh, I'm not hating on Zoom as a company. There are a lot of good reviews. But in the case of this specific one that my buddy bought, it was faulty. It fell off. He contacted them. They were super cool about it and they said, hey, you know what? We will send you another one, you know, free of charge. A $300 exhaust. They sent him another one, same one. And uh, yeah, my buddy gave me this one. I mounted it on mine. I said, you know what? I don't care as long as I don't have the stock exhaust. And uh, it sounded good. I loved it. But then uh, the weld broke and this bad boy is no longer usable. Funny thing, just recently, his replacement one broke on the back here, the welds, guys. Same exact thing happened on his second one. So this isn't like an isolated thing. I don't know, again, if it's just from putting it on a clone and not an actual Grom, but his, his replacement broke. It was the welds on the back side, not the front, but the back. So um, I'm gonna have to say at this point in time, I don't recommend this. Let me, let me know, guys. Maybe you guys have a Zoom exhaust and you don't have any problems. Um, maybe you do have problems. Maybe the same exact problems. Let me know. I want to know. Um, for right now, for the benefit of the doubt, I'm just going to assume that it's probably because it's not meant for this. And maybe since these things vibrate a little bit, it probably caused that to prematurely wear and break off. If you are going to get a clone, I'm just going to say stay away from spending that much money when you can buy an $80 exhaust off of Amazon and a fraction of the price, and it sounds exactly the same. Sounds amazing, and again, 80 bucks. For your clone, anyway. Last couple of parts, guys. Um, you can't see it, but I upgraded the front sprocket. I want to say these come with a 13 or a 14, and it does off the line stock. It's, it's really torquey, it feels awesome. I didn't care so much about that as being torquey and fast off the line. I went with a 17 tooth in the front, and a Vortex 34 in the back. And then we went with a RK Takasago chain, um, just because it's red. So having done those higher uh, sprocket sizes, it does make this a little bit faster, a um, little bit higher top speed. The thing with these Chinese bikes is it's not gonna be 100% correct. So uh, yeah, but what I've gotten it up to is about 65, almost 70 miles per hour on here and that's what it says on the speedometer. Last but not least, I can show a picture rather than taking the seat off. I went with a Performance CDI recommended by a buddy of mine. Um, 10 bucks on eBay, that I am sure of the price. And what it is is it's a control module for the ignition. Um, these bikes again are not, they do not have an ECU. Um, it's a carbon bike and that is your control module. So basically, with the performance one, I'll show a picture here. Um, it's gonna let you rev out past 9K. You actually get to use your gears a little bit longer and get the most out of each gear. It's supposed to give you also a higher top speed. I haven't tested that out really. And overall, it's just supposed to make the bike perform a lot better. Um, I will say that I do know the RPMs actually rev out to I wanna say 15-ish, so it's a little bit more. And that's enough anyway, because these bikes and the gearing is so small 
that once you do max it out anyway, it's gonna stop, it's, it won't let you go any further past that and it's gonna bog down a little bit. So you're gonna wanna shift into your next gear anyway. Um, if you don't know, these are a four speed. So one down, neutral, two, three, four. Yeah, other than that, that's all the mods I've done. And to reiterate again, I don't know how many times I've said this, even with all those parts, guys, that still brings this price grand total well under the price of a Grom. All in all, do I recommend getting a Grom clone? So more specifically, uh, with my particular bike and everything that I've done to it, stock versus modified, it's, it's still a fun bike. It's still cheap at the end of the day. And yes, in my opinion, it's 100% worth getting a clone. Now, having said that, I know that there's some people that like the brand name and, you know, the integrity of the name. Honda is a great name. They've been making bikes and vehicles far and wide for many, many years. So I do understand why people are going to go and say, you know what, I'm going to go with a Honda Grom. So go for it. I'm not knocking Honda Groms at all. Realistically, if I wanted to get one, I, I, I would get one. Um, I went the cheap route for me because I knew that the Grom parts were going to fit. Um, and I knew that uh, most of these, if not all of these prices of every single part are very, very, very cheap. And I got my money's worth. I'm still getting my money's worth. And I plan on to do a lot more. So when I do that, guys, I hope you guys stick around and uh, follow me along my journey here. And, you know, we can put those parts on and you guys can see firsthand how to install them. Maybe I end up buying something that you guys want to put on your bike and want to see how it's done, what it looks like before you purchase it. So having covered all that, I hope you guys are going to stick around. If you liked the video, thumbs up, please. I'd greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, I hope you guys subscribe because uh, I'm not done yet. So guys, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, hopefully you guys stick around. If you like what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And uh, maybe you'll subscribe. I hope you'll subscribe because uh, there's gonna be more to come. Uh, I plan on buying more stuff to throw at this bike and uh, hopefully you guys will stick around for those videos. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.